Assalamu alaikum students. This is your instructor, Muhammad Umar Khatak, for the subject project management. This is our 10th lecture and chapter number 2. And today we'll be studying project selection models. Numeric and non-numeric. There are two basic types of project selection models, numeric and non-numeric. Both are widely used. Many organizations use both at the same time, or they use models that are combinations of the two. Non-numeric models, as the name implies, do not use numbers as inputs. Numeric models do, but the criteria being measured may be either objective or subjective. We talk about non-numeric models now, and there, ha there are a few subtypes of the non-numeric model, and we'll examine them first. The sacred cow. In this case, the project is suggested by a senior and powerful official in the organization. Often the project is initiated with a simple comment such as, if you have a chance, why don't you look into, and there follows an undeveloped idea for a new product, for the development of a new market, or for some other project requiring an investment of the firm's resources. The immediate result of this bland statement is the creation of a project to investigate whether the boss has suggested, whatever the boss has suggested. The project is sacred in the sense that it will be maintained until successfully concluded or until the boss personally recognize, recognizes the idea as a failure and terminates it. Now, let's talk about the operating necessity. If a flood is threatening the plant, a project to build a protective dam or dike does not require much formal evaluation, which is, which is an example of the scenario. XYZ Steel Corporation has used this criterion and the following criterion also in evaluating potential projects. If the project is required in order to keep the systems operating, the primary question becomes, is the system worth saving at estimated cost of the project? If the answer is yes, the project cost will be examined to make sure that they are kept as low as is consistent with the project success, but the project will be funded. The competitive necessity. Using this criterion, XYZ Steel undertook a major plant rebuilding project in the late 1960s in a steel bar manufacturing facilities near Chicago. It had become apparent to XYZ management that the company's bar mill needed modernization if the firm was to maintain its competitive position in the Chicago market area. Although the planning process for the project was quite sophisticated, the decision to undertake the project was based on a desire to maintain the company's competitive position in the market. In a similar manner, many business schools are restructuring their undergraduate and MBA programs to stay competitive with more forward-looking schools. In large part, this action is driven by declining numbers of tuition-paying students and also the need to develop stronger programs to attract them. Investment in an operating necessity project takes precedence over a competitive necessity project, but both types of projects may bypass the more carefully numeric analysis used for projects deemed to be less urgent or less important to the survival of the firm. The product line extension. In this case, a project to develop and distribute new products would be judged on the degree to which it fits the firm's existing product line, fills a gap, strengthens a weak link, or extends the life in a new desirable direction. Sometimes careful calculation of profitability are not required. Decision makers can act on their own beliefs about what will be likely impact on the total system performance if the, if a, if the new product is added to the line.
Comparative Benefit Model For this situation, assume that an organization has many projects to consider, perhaps several dozen. Senior management would like to select a subset of the projects that would most benefit the firm, but the projects do not seem to be easily comparable. For example, some projects concern potential new products, some require the conduct of research and development projects for a government agency, some concern changes in production methods, other concern computerization of certain records, and still others cover a variety of subjects not easily categorized. The organization has no formal method of selecting projects, but members of the selection committee think that some projects will benefit the firm more than the others, even if they have no precise way to define or measure benefit. The concept of comparative benefits, if not a formal model, is widely adopted for selection decisions on all sorts of projects. Most United Way organizations use the concept to make decisions about which of several social programs to fund. Senior management of the funding organization then examine all projects with, with positive recommendations and att attempts to construct a portfolio that fits best the organization aims and its budget. Competitive Benefit Model QSORT Method First, the projects are divided into three groups, good, fair, and poor, according to their relative merits. If any group has more than eight members, it is subdivided into two categories, such as fair plus and fair minus. When all categories have eight or fewer members, the project within each category are ordered from best to worst. The rater may use specific criteria to rank each project or may simply use general overall judgment. Numeric models, profit and profitability. As noted earlier, a large majority of all firms using project evaluation and selection models use profitability as a sole measure of acceptability. We will consider these models first and then discuss more comprehensive models. Payback period. The payback period for a project is the initial fixed investment in the project divided by the estimated annual net cash flows from the project. The ratio of these quantities is the number of years required for the project to repay its initial first investment. For example, assume a project cost $100,000 to implement and has an annual net cash inflows of $25,000. Now, what would be the payback period? When we divide $100,000 by $25,000, we get four years. So the project will pay back its initial investment in four years. Discounted cash flows. Also referred to as the net present value method, the discounted cash flow method determines the net present value of all cash flows by discounting them by the required rate of return, also known as the hurdle rate, the cutoff rate, and similar terms. Internal rate of return. If we have a set of expected cash flows and cash outflows, the internal rate of return is the discount rate that equates the present values of the two sets of flows. If AT is expected cash flow, outflow in the period T and RT is the expected cash inflow for the period T, the internal rate of return is the value of K that satisfied the following equation. The value of K is found by a trial and error. Profitability index. Also known as the benefit cost ratio, the profitability index is the net present value of all future expected cash flows divided by the initial cash investment. Some firms do not discount the cash flows in making this calculation. If the ratio is greater than 1, the project may be accepted.
numeric model scoring. In an attempt to overcome some of the disadvantages of profitability models, particularly their focus on single decision criterion, a number of evaluation selection models that, are, that use multiple criteria to evaluate a project has been developed. Such models vary widely in their complexity and information requirement. These, the examples discussed illustrate some of the different types of numeric scoring models. Unweighted 0-1 factor model. A set of relevant factors is selected by management and then usually listed in pre-printed form. One or more raters score the project on each factor depending on whether or not it qualifies for individual criterion. The raters are chosen by senior managers for the most part from the roles of senior management. Unweighted 0-1 factor model. The criteria for choices are a clear understanding of the organizational goals and a good knowledge of the firm's potential project portfolio. The main advantage of such a model is that it uses several criteria in the decision process. The major disadvantages are that it assumes all criteria are of equal importance and it allows for no gradation of the degree to which a specific project meets the various criteria. Unweighted factor scoring model. The second disadvantage of the 0-1 factor model can be dealt with by constructing a simple linear measure of the degree to which the project being evaluated meets each of the criteria contained in the list. Often, a 5-point scale is used where 5 is very good, 4 is good, 3 is fair, 2 is poor, 1 is very poor. The use of a discrete numeric scale to represent the degree to which a criterion is satisfied is widely accepted. Weighted Factor Scoring Model when numeric weights reflecting the relative importance of each individual factor are added, we have a weighted factor scoring model. It is quite possible with this type of model to include a large number of criteria. It is not particularly difficult to develop scoring scales and weights, and the ease of gathering and processing the required information makes it tempting to include marginally relevant criteria along with the obviously important items. It is not particularly difficult to computerize a weighted scoring model by creating a template on Excel or on one of the standard computer spreadsheets. As was the case with profitability models, Scoring models have their own characteristics, advantages and disadvantages. Now let's take a look at the advantages of the scoring models. These models allow multiple criteria to be used for evaluation and decision making, include, including profit profitability models and both tangible and intangible criteria. They are structurally simple and therefore easy to understand and use. They are a direct reflection of managerial policy. They are easily altered to accommodate changes in the environment or managerial policy. Weighted scoring models allow for the fact that some criteria are more important than others. These models allow easy sensitivity analysis. The trade-offs between several criteria are readily observable. Now let's talk about the disadvantages. The output of scoring model is strictly a relative measure. Project scores do not represent the value or utility associated with the project and thus do not directly indicate 
whether or not the project should be supported. In general, scoring models are linear in the form and elements of such models are assumed to be independent. The ease of use of these models is conducive to the inclusion of large number of criteria, most of which have small weights, that they have little impact on the total project score. Unweighted scoring models assume all criteria are of equal importance, which is almost certainly contrary to the fact. To the extent that profit profitability is included as an element in the scoring model, this element has the advantages and disadvantages noted earlier for the profitability models themselves. That would be the end of the lecture. Thank you.